So let's say your maintenance is 3,000 calories, you're eating 2,600 calories. There is no reason why your body's gonna store any extra energy because you're in a deficit. I know you see it when it's too hard to believe in cause you're witnessing the closest people leaving what is going on YouTube you're back with the prez we are in the kitchen and today's video I'm gonna be teaching you guys some simple dietary hacks that'll help you maintain leanness year-round and when I mean year-round I mean whether your goal is to stay lean and be in a deficit whether you're on a cut or if you want to gain some muscle and you have to go on a bulk there is no reason why you should ever have to be too overweight or not in shape year round, right? It's very simple to, rel to be relatively lean year round as long as you follow some simple dietary hacks as well as you adhere to your calorie needs throughout the year depending on your overall goals. So we're in the kitchen today. I'm about to whip up some lunch. It's an off day for me. Previous video, you saw a full day of eating and a training day. I just cut up a full pineapple. I just prepared some asparagus that I'm about to cook with my lunch. I have here 10 ounces of bison strip steak, which I had marinating in some noble made by the new Primal Smoky Barbecue Sauce. It's only 20 calories per serving, zero grams of fat, just four grams of carbs in here. And uh, again, this is just basically spices, tomato puree, gluten free, soy free, none of those fillers in here. You know I don't mess with none of that stuff. So we're gonna cook this meal up. It's gonna be lunch for me today, actually. And we're gonna have with it, as you guys know, always about the gut health, we're gonna have some organic sauerkraut on the side. So like I was talking about, guys, I'm gonna give you guys some tips of how to stay lean year round as I go about and cook up my lunch. So what you're gonna see today for this lunch meal is I'm gonna be eating this strip steak, which is a fattier cut of meat, asparagus, pineapple, and sauerkraut. Typically, if you watched the previous video, full day of eating on my training day, it's a lot more carbs involved, right? Remember, I've spoke about this many times in the past. You can teach your body how to utilize carbs and fats more efficiently throughout the week where you can have some more dietary room to, you know, eat different types of food and more variety throughout the week depending on the goal and the day of the week it is and what you're doing. So, I get this question asked often. As you guys know, like I mentioned in the previous video, I'm currently on a bulk. Bulking calories for me, falling around 33 to 3,500, depending on the day of the week and how hard I'm training. You guys also know I'm only training about two days a week where I'm training full out, full body, very intense, the program that I've been on. And that third day lately is more of a maintenance day where I'm lowering the weight just working on form and also hitting some movement patterns that I don't train in my typical routine. Because mainly all I'm training is overhead pressing, weighted pull-ups, weighted dips, squats, and sometimes muscle-ups. So I'm really neglecting some rowing movements, some hamstring movements. So on that third day of the week, I'll go and throw some rowing exercises and some, and some posterior work for the hamstrings and glutes, etc., etc. Zero calorie olive oil spray. We're going to coat these pans right now. We're going to cook the steak and the asparagus at the same time. Now, one question I get asked often. Do I keep my calories high if I'm on a bulk if I'm not training as well, meaning on an off day? So typically my maintenance calories, I would say, fall around 3,000 to around 3,200 calories per day. If I eat around 3,000 to 3,200 calories per day, 3,000, I'll probably start losing weight. If I eat around 3,200, I'm just going to stay stagnant on the scale. So I would say my maintenance is probably around 31 to 3,200 calories per day. Like I said, I'm eating around 33 to 3,500 in a surplus, meaning that's the goal is over time is to put on some muscle and overall size. Now, you guys can see, weighing in around 164 on my last video, 165 pounds. I go to bed weighing around 166 pounds, and I'm still relatively lean. Even though I'm in a surplus of calories right now, I'm never going to allow myself to get too sloppy. That's just going to put you in a bad position when it comes time for you wanting to get back down to leanness. Whether it's summer, you have a vacation or a goal, you just want to cut. 
the more fat you gain in the bulking season, the harder it's going to be to cut. And again, you're just going to be more in that place where you were before you started the bulk, right? You don't want to have an abundance of fat gain and a minimal amount of muscle gain over your bulk, right? You want it to be opposite. You want to have as most muscle gain as possible, but as minimal fat gain as possible. So, some tips. One, we're going to talk about a little bit of science right now. We're going to talk about bioenergetics, right? Bioenergetics is basically the body's ability to use energy. And remember, we only can get energy from food. We're not plants. We cannot get energy from the sun or things like that. Food, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Protein is the least important or the least um, required, not least required, it's the least fuel source that the body wants to utilize for energy, right? Remember, protein is a rebuilding and repairing energy, right? It goes to repairing muscle, rebuilding cells, repairing the body, right? It's not its ideal source of energy. The other two macronutrients, for that matter, fats and carbs, are ideal sources of energy. But when you utilize them, it will make all the difference. So, 10 ounces bison strip. Seven minutes on the clock. That's the timer. That's how long it'll take me to cook this. I'll sear each side for about a minute, minute and a half. I'll throw these asparagus on the other burner. So this steak I'm cooking on high. Like I said, I'm gonna sear both sides, a minute, minute and a half each side. That'll bring me down to about four to five minutes, depending on the remainder time on the clock. Like I said, it's gonna take seven minutes to cook. I'll just keep it on a medium flame and I'll flip it halfway through. Asparagus I'm just gonna shake up. Now, tip number one. When you're not resistance training, lower the carbohydrate intake. That does not mean if you're on a bulk, you have to lower the calories. If you have a goal of gaining weight and you're a hard gainer, you can keep the calories the same, whether you're training or whether you're training or it's an off day. Remember, an off day should be also think, thought about as a recovery day, right? You want to recover and replenish the body from the previous workout day. So when you go to your next workout day, you're not under eating and you're replenished. Your muscles are full of nutrients. Your glycogen stores are back. You have enough fat in the system to prolong energy as well. So. Where is my fork that I just threw out? Now I get another one. So I was a minute and 20 on one side. I'll flip it again. Let this side sear. So like I was saying, bioenergetics, protein, carbs, and fats. On your off days, it would be more advantageous to maintain a lean physique and more advantageous to your overall physique goals to lower the carbohydrates. Like I said, you can manipulate and teach your body how to utilize certain nutrients when they need the most. Glycogen or glucose is going to be the primary source of energy that your body is going to want to utilize when it's resistance training, when it's breaking down muscle, when it's exercising, when it's working hard. That's going to be your primary fuel source. So when you're training, whether you're in a surplus or in a deficit of calories, right? Deficit, you have a little more uh, flexibility of what you want to do, right? It's a little easier in terms of staying lean, right? As long as you're in a deficit, the fat's going to come off. Performance-wise, that's when the macros come in to more importance for performance when you're in a cut. Now, remember, when you're in a bulk, you're going to always have that abundance. When you're in a surplus of calories, you're always going to have that abundance of energy for your body to utilize to perform its daily tasks and to get through the training sessions. But like I said, if you're resistance training, if you have a demanding routine, right, and you're focusing on breaking down muscle, and you're, you know, you're not really training as an endurance runner or things like that, glycogen and carbs are going to be your best friend. So on the training days, you want to keep the carbs higher and the fats lower. Remember, we only have three sources of energy. Carbohydrates, fats, and protein being the least important in terms of energy, right? Carbohydrates and fats are going to be the most important in terms of energy. Now, when you're training, like I said, your body's going to want to utilize glucose and glycogen because you're going to be breaking down muscle and that's going to be an immediate source of fuel for your body. Fats take longer to break down than carbohydrates. Remember this, guys. Carbohydrates are always, are always going to give you four calories per gram. 
Protein is always going to give you 4 calories per gram and fat is always going to give you 9 calories per gram. So if we had one piece of pure protein weighed out to 1 gram here, 1 gram of pure sugar right here, and 1 gram of pure fat, the fat is going to give you the most calories, even though they all weigh the same, 1 gram, 1 gram, 1 gram, the 1 gram of fat is going to have more caloric energy in it to supply your body with energy. Now, on your off days, like you're going to see me having now, I will lower the carbohydrates and slightly increase the fats. Remember, you're getting almost more than 2 to 1 on an energy ratio when you're coming to fats than carbs, right? So if you lower the carbs a little bit, you only got to slightly increase the fats slightly to make up for that loss of macronutrients, to make up for that loss of energy. So for instance, we lost, let's just say we want to cut out 50 grams of carbs from our diet for the day, right? That would be 200 calories cut out from your diet. You, the way you add in, so you'd have to cut out 50 grams of carbs to lose 200 calories. You only got to add in about 20 grams of fat to equal that 200 calories again, right? So you can lower the carbs by 50 and you can up the fats by, let's just say, 10 to 15 and that's going to give you that difference in calories, right? Lower the carbs, increase the fats slightly on your off days. Remember, if you're giving your body carbohydrates when it's not needed, they're just going to be utilized and they're not going to be utilized, they're just going to be stored in not only the liver, because remember, your muscles are going to be tapped off. They're going to start to store in fat cells now. So if your muscles aren't breaking down glycogen and you're starting to eat a bunch of carbs, where are they going to get stored? Into the fat cells. That's when they get converted and they store as fat cells in your body, making you obviously gain body fat. Now, on the other hand, if you have a little higher fat on your off days, your body's going to learn, all right, I'm not getting any glucose. I'm not going to have any spikes in blood sugar. Let's just keep burning off fat today as a source of energy. You're not giving me carbs. Why am I going to break down carbs? We're just going to break down fat. So on an off day, you will see. If I was eating, like I said, I'm eating a slightly fattier cut of meat today. On an on day, when I train, I eat leaner cuts of meat, right? My fats stay lower in, a to in total of calorie-wise, right? So let's just say on an off day, my macros fall at 40% protein, 40% carbs, 20% fat. I'm just giving you an example. And now on my... That's an on day, I'm sorry. For an on day, let's say my macros fall. 40% protein, 40% carbs, 20% fat. So I'm doing double the amount of carbohydrates in terms of percentage as fats. Now on an off day, my body doesn't need that 40% of carbohydrates. I'm not training, I'm not breaking down glycogen. Let's increase the fats. Let's go 35% fat, 25% carbs, and let's keep the protein at 40%. We still got that 100% overall energy value, but now we utilize more fats in terms of energy as opposed to carbohydrates. Like I said, the more you can manipulate the way your body utilizes these macronutrients or energy sources, the more efficient it's going to be at utilizing them, meaning burning them and using them for energy when they're needed. So I would always recommend on an off day, when you're increasing the fats, you dramatically want to lower the carbohydrates, especially the starches. So with this meal, I wouldn't have any rice with it, right, or a potato. Why? Because there's enough fat in the steak already to give my body energy and calories it needs. Now if I start throwing on some starches, which are going to break down slower in the body as well, my body's not going to have any reason to utilize those starches. So now I'm giving my body energy from fats and energy from carbs when my body doesn't need any energy from carbs like that. It would prefer to have energy from fats because it's not utilizing any glycogen. It's not doing any demanding, intense work. So for me to load up a bunch of glycogen or starches with this meal would be counterproductive to my goals and to staying lean. Oh, seven minutes is done. Steak is just about done. Asparagus is done. Let's plate this up. Again, I'm just going to be talking while I'm getting my whole meal prepared for you guys. So, fattier cut of meat, no starches, green cruciferous vegetables, asparagus, spinach, broccoli, some gut friendly greens or cabbage as well, which we're going to have right here with this sauerkraut, sauerkraut is cabbage, 
So again, very gut friendly. It's going to help the body break down this steak and the fats in the steak and allow you to utilize and assimilate all these nutrients. And as well, our main carb source for the day, because again, we still have to hit the overall calorie goal that we need, right? And we don't want to go, we're not trying to go keto here. We're just trying to, again, lower the carbs when we don't need them and increase the fats when we don't need the carbs. So we're not going full keto here. So for the carbs, we're going to have six ounces of pineapple. Pineapple, known for its enzyme, bromelain. It helps break down and digest protein, especially in fattier cuts of meat. You guys want to take it to the next level before this meal, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to pop down four digestive enzymes, mass signs. You guys have heard me talk about them many times in the past. I'm not going to make or break you, or that's not a tip that I'm having, that I'm trying to explain for you guys to keep lean. That's more for overall gut health and digestion benefits. So, when you're not training and you're having fattier cuts of meat, that's when you want to lower the starches. Focus more on green vegetables with the fats, with the fattier cuts of meat. And um, again, on the on days when you're training, that's when you want to have leaner cuts. So if I was training today, instead of having this strip, it would be more of a tenderloin. Very low in fat, very high in protein. But there, where is the energy coming from? And since it's very low in fat, and I resistance trained, and I broke down glycogen, my body's preferred source of energy then is going to be glycogen or glucose to refuel, to replenish the muscles after the workout. Pre-workout, that's why you're going to see me having a carb-heavy meal, to push me through the workout that I'm going to go. I need the energy to sustain through the workout. Then when the workout's done, you're going to be depleted. You're going to be broken down all the glycogen in the muscles, especially when you're doing long sessions like I do, two-hour sessions. Two-hour sessions, obviously, you're going to be very depleted. That's why post-workout, again, lean cuts of protein because you're not using protein for energy. Protein is going to repair and rebuild the muscles. And then carbs to refill the glycogen stores in the muscle. That's not repairing. You're not repairing the broken down muscle fibers by eating carbs. No, that's what protein does. You're replenishing the stored energy in the muscles by eating carbs. And then the rest of the, mu rest of the stored energy goes to the liver. And it would have no reason to get stored as fat because you're not giving it abundance of energy. Now, if I had post-workout on an on day, a filet or a tenderloin, a lean cut, rice, but then I sl slathered that rice or the steak over with butter. Where is that butter going to get stored now? My body doesn't use, doesn't need any fat energy right now, so it's going to store all that fat energy right into the fat cells, and that's what I, my, goes to my next point, which I spoke about in my previous full day of eating video. And just let me show you guys. Look at that perfectness, medium rare, beautiful work right there. Mm. Bison over beef any day of the week for me. Get some sauerkraut. So like I said, I say this is my next point. If you eat a lot of fat, your body is going to burn a lot of fat. But it's also going to store a lot of fat as well. If you eat a lot of carbohydrates and not fat, your body is not going to burn a lot of fat. It's going to burn more of the carbohydrates you use, but it's also not going to store a lot of fat. And carbohydrates in the absence of excess fat are very hard to be stored as fat because your body is going to be breaking down and utilizing that glycogen and carbs when it needs to. Now, let's talk about when you're in a deficit. A lot easier, right? So, let's say your maintenance is 3,000 calories, you're eating 2,600 calories. There is no reason why your body's going to store any extra energy because you're in a deficit. So whether you have high fats or high carbs is a preference. Apologies, my camera died. I had to finish the video with my phone. So like I was saying, when you're in a deficit, it's less important whether you're having a high fat diet or a high carb diet, right? And that's the thing. Once, once people like go on like those keto diets or like a carnivore based diet where they're eliminating almost a whole energy group, a whole macronutrient group, it's probably putting them just in a deficit in general, right? And that's why they lose the weight. Now, like I was saying, performance wise, that's when it will make a difference whether you're in a cut or not, the foods that you're choosing to eat, right? Like I said, as long as you're in a deficit and you're training, it doesn't matter if you have a high fat or high carb diet, 
Either one is preferable. Either one is it's a preference up to you guys. Both will produce fat loss and allow you to get leaner. But it's the performance benefits that you're going to get by utilizing a more high carb or a more high fat diet, whether it's dependent on your goals, right? So if your goal is to maintain as much muscle and, you know, almost look like a bodybuilder, look lean and shredded, and you want to still be able to perform in high intensity workouts, meaning hard training sessions, not hit workouts where we're doing cardio, then still, still, sure, you want to prioritize higher carbs as opposed to higher fats when you're in a deficit. But again, as long as you're in a deficit, you should be able to maintain that leanness. You don't have performance goals and you just prefer to eat a higher fat diet when you're lean. Let's say you're focusing more on strength and you're doing one rep maxes, right? We're taking long break periods. Really no need to break that and really no need for abundance of carbs. You're going to perform just fine on a high fat diet. Let's say you do a marathons, you're a runner. It's probably more advantageous to eat a lot of fat because fat's a higher energy source. It's going to provide more energy per gram. And again, it's not going to be as glycogen demanding as let's say resistance training for an hour or an hour and a half, right? So it all comes down to whether you're in a bulk or a cut. Cutting is very easy to maintain leanness and you have no reason why you shouldn't. And bulking, there's no reason to go in abundance of calories like I was saying, right? If your maintenance is 3,000, you should never eat more than 3,500, right? Never should never be more than a 500 calorie surplus of calories. That's going to lead to excessive weight gain. Because remember this always, guys. An excess of 3,500 calories equals one pound gained. Now, if you're not resistance training and all you're doing is sitting on the couch all day and eating an abundance of 3,500 calories every week, you're just going to gain a pound of fat every week. Now, if you're resistance training, let's say you tip the scales and you train four days out of the week. You could hope that that surplus of calories, you're going to get maybe a 60-40 muscle to fat building ratio, right? That would be ideal, right? Even more so if you have elite genetics. Maybe you could put on 70% muscle and only 30% fat. That would be ideal, right? But not everybody has elite level genetics. And it's inevitable that you are going to always put on some body fat because you cannot just build pure muscle when you're in a surplus. So I hope this video gave you a little insight of how to manipulate the foods, the carbohydrates, the fats, and why protein is not an important energy source, but it's an important macronutrient for repairing and rebuilding. And another thing about protein, guys, it's the most satiating macronutrient. So if you're eating high protein meals, it's gonna, they're going to keep you satiated longer, right? Because protein, even though it only has four calories per gram and fat has nine calories per gram, protein takes a little longer to digest in the body, providing longer sustained satiating right or satiety i should say right so easy tips to help you guys maintain leanness year round there's no reason why you should get into a bulk and start losing your shape you should always have some type of shape to you build muscle that should be the goal not building fat you don't want to gain a bunch of fat in your bulk and when you're cutting maintain muscle mass keep the carbs high if you prefer to do a keto diet it'll work if you prefer to do a high fat diet again as long as you're in a deficit you're going to stay lean but it's very easy, again, if you're in a bulk. Now, let's say you're in a bulk and you're eating a high-fat diet. You want to do keto in a bulk? It's very easy, like I said, to overeat fat and store fat. So if you're eating too much fat in a bulk, your body's just going to inevitably store more fat than it would if it ate a little more carbohydrates. Hope these tips helped you out. I'm going to put the rest of this meal down now because it's probably getting cold and I'm hungry. Uh, you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. I always get back to you guys. Like the video. It helps YouTube share the video. It helps the algorithm out. Share it with your friends and your family. If YouTube ain't sharing it, you share the video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. I appreciate all the support, guys. Let's keep growing this channel. I'm going to start bringing you more and more consistent content. Even though I'm on a strict routine, I'm going to start bringing out more content for you guys. Keep it fresh. Keep it new. Keep it interesting. Next routine, I'm, next video I'm going to post for that matter is going to be a conditioning routine, right? Because the one thing I lose when I'm on my strength training program that I've been on is my conditioning aspect towards calisthenics. So stay tuned for that video. Like always, guys, peace out. Bar Naturals. They all love to talk, you know they do that shit the most. Think you on my level, boy, but you ain't even close.